It's been a while since Greg's last Seago trip photo walk vlog. Much in the world has changed. Some good. Some bad. Some really bad. But here's Greg's attempt to move Dial back towards the good. For much has happened in Greg's life since last episode was released. Greg made a few new and varied short films of modest acclaim. The digital links to which, are easily accessible on screen here, as well as in the description below. Greg has also joined the live streaming world of Twitch.tv, where he has hoped to have spread the good word with regards to one's ability to improve their quality of life by the immersion and practice of art. In short, it is called the creative content community, in that if you are creating, you'll surely be content. And please note that Greg invites you to join. It's free, and boy how, it's fantastic. But in the meantime, what now, in recent times, Greg had a summer's afternoon off, and decided to visit a garden park. Cameras in hand, a new photo walk vlog began to take shape. Greg's latest Seago trip. Episode, number, I'm, uh, not sure, lost count, so, let's just call this episode number, 7, as in lucky number. Cool with you? Alright good, it's showtime. Remember when I said it's been a while since Greg made one of these photo walk videos? Well, Sir Gregory forgot that his video camera can sometimes overheat, and the sun be scorching that day baby. Though I have some good news, his photo camera, the workhorse that is the Sony A7R Mark II, kept working through that high noon sizzle, and there are a few more photos to reveal. But before then, may I present to you, the, Greg, Seago. Equipped with a formal apology and, 
What's this, a brisk tutorial of sorts? Take it away, Maestro Gregorio. Okay, Brian, thank you. We're here in Lightroom, as you can see. I just want to go over quickly the basics. A quick, quick, brisk walkthrough of what my workflow kind of looks like. So, this is the most important thing we start. Right-clicking the panels here. Solo mode is what you want. Just cleaner interface. A little, little quick hack for all y'all. I check lens correction first. Enable profile correction. It has correctly read the data from my camera. Sony FE, FE 24 to 240. It's a big boy of a lens, you know what I mean? So re we remove chromatic aberration even though don't see much. I like to transform next, see if that does anything. No upright correction found, so we ignore that. And if you know me, if you've seen any of my streams, I like to find the composition first. So I'm thinking maybe we really change this up and perhaps even, you know, a one-to-one -one would look nice. And this is the, the brilliance of Lightroom versus Photoshop, it's all non-destructive. We can change things. We could do that and press enter, but hey, we don't like that. So we press undo and here we are back at it. So I'm trying to, again, verticalize this uh, center of these beautiful leaves here with the light going through it at Untermeyer and kind of find my composition first. I find that this, of course, there's so much we can do within Lightroom to boost everything that we gathered, but if the composition don't look right, then what's the point? You know what I mean? So I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Click and enter. We got it. We're done. Just kidding. I like to go to basic. <laughs> and I like to use Lightroom and see what the software interprets or how it interprets the image first. So as shot, I want to see auto white balance. It does very a great job. As we can see, here's the whitest part of the image. The before, there's a little blue tone. Uh, auto corrects it. Hope you can see that on your screen. Next, I like to go and deal with all of these. Oh my God, exposure, contrast. You must be so overwhelmed. Well, the easy way out is clicking auto and voila, but I hate all of this. It doesn't look good at all. Looking at this, we gotta boost this color. We gotta boost the shadows a bit, open them up, but the background I wanna keep dark. So what can we do? What can we do? Yes, you over there with your hand up. Oh yeah, correct. We can mask. And the incredible modern day Lightroom has a new mask feature. As you can see here, select subject. We click this, it detecting subject and look what happens. Oh my goodness. It was able to properly detect the entirety of the leaves. Although, you know, it is AI, it ain't Terminator yet. So kind of made a little bit of a mistake, but you know what we could do? Click subtract, brush, and we can just paint this out. So here's here's where the magic happens. Are you ready? Are you holding on to something? I really hope so. So, you can turn off sh show overlay. We got it all masked. Now everything we do will only affect our subject. If we bring up the exposure, boy, how, look at that. This is coming together nicely, but that's a little too much. I wanna start by just dealing with the shadows and the highlights. Remember, everything you do here is very powerful, so less is more. So bringing the shadows up, say 25, you can see as the computer is slowly overheating, uh, the little subtle differences, same with the exposure ever so slightly. So if we quickly look with the mask, without the mask, with and without. It's so subtle, but but so impactful. This is the beauty of Lightroom. You get to experiment nonstop, non-destructively. And here we are. So you guys ready? 
Are you holding on to something? Look at this. Before, after. Before, after. Subtle, but stupendous. Stupendous indeed, good boy. I quite enjoyed that tutorial. Here are the rest of the images from that day. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that cheeky bell. And be sure to check out old Greg on Twitch. Whether practicing video game photography, or real life edits, you can find him there most every night. Don't forget to say howdy. Until then, this is Brian Ains reminding you to join the creative content community and of course, to stretch before bed.